for robots, you write, in general, I like Hans Moravik's formulation that these are our children. How does one raise children? You train them for the inevitable letting go. If our children never left our control, we'd not only be disappointed, but we'd be out of control of its maker. So it will be with our mind's children, the robots. Is there a parent with a teenager who is not concerned, who does not have a bit of worry? It took us a long time to realize that the power of a technology is proportional to its inherent out-of-controlness, its inherent ability to surprise and be generative. In fact, unless we can worry about a technology It's not revolutionary enough. Powerful technology demands responsibility. With the generative power of robots, we need heavy-duty responsibility. We should be aiming to train our robotic children to be good citizens. That means instilling in them values so they can make responsible decisions as we let them go. And that's a profound point and one that's going to starting today increasingly occupies into the future, isn't it? Yes, and I, I have to you know, confess that we collectively don't have a very good set of tools to manage the, particularly the self-replicating technologies. These are the, right. the four types of technology that someone like Bill Joy right. and others have written about that we should be worried about, and we, in some senses, should be worried about anything that can self-replicate because what happens with self-replication is that it very quickly uh, in, through compounding leverage can, can just veer away. If right. things are doubling all the time, it can go very fast, and the faster to go, uh, the faster off course it can go. Right. And so if you have things like robots making robots, if you have you know genetic therapy and cloning being reproduced biologically, if you have nano gadgets that are replicating anything where you have replication and recursiveness, these systems are going to be very hard to put in guidance, let alone control. I, we're, I'm not trying to control them. We're trying to train them. We're trying to guide them. And we don't have a, a very large set of tools yet, but right. we we can. We, we, we know how to train children. Yeah. We know that we have an existence proof yeah. that this can happen. Yeah. And so uh, I, I think that's where we want to spend our focus on. Rather than trying to prohibit technologies, which never works, right. prohibition in technologies like uh, you know, censorship on the net, it, things just route around it. And yeah. so right now we have basically one answer to things that we don't like, which is no. Yep. And that's not a that's not a good answer. What we want to, to do is to say, well, you know, kind of like children, how about this? We'll right. find a different place for you. We'll we'll try and match what you can do right. and we'll work with the technology as we would work with children. Right. And that's something that needs to particularly be absorbed by, understood by, addressed by individuals who are working on the leading edge of these yes. green technologies, these self-replicating right. technologies. Right. And that's something that you don't see happening as much as it should. No, no, we don't. Yeah. And and I, I think part of that is that is educational process, but, but part of it is because there's not a lot of role models. And, yeah. And, you know, the typical ordinary human response to something that is sort of harming us is to prohibit it. Right. And I, I think requires again a different view of of technology to to not prohibit it, but to try and relocate it is is how I might say. And, right. Right. And I think part of it, you know, I think even child rearing has gone through an, its own evolution. And I, I think there was a, a period of time when people had this idea of genetic inheritance of dispositions, a criminal class, and stuff right. like that, where right. somebody was bad. You basically wanted to prohibit them, right. um, and now we we understand a little bit more that there are no bad children. What you want to do is you want to match them and 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 train them and re-educate them if you have to. So we take a proactive stance rather than the classic precautionary stance yeah. on technology, which yeah. is uh, the first thing you do with the technology is you say no to it until it can yeah. be proven 
good, and I think that's absolutely the wrong thing to do, and it just encourages us not to think about uh, how to, to, to work with technology, and we have to just kind of change the default. And I think that is plugging directly into one of the central issues on the cultural agenda in today's world, and that's a discussion of values themselves. Right. And that's such a loaded, loaded area. On the one hand, you have The Values Driven Life, a book that sold something like 27 million copies, mm -hmm. offering a fundamental traditional value view. And mm -hmm. that has that kind of sales simply because the alternative in today's modern and postmodern world is either nihilism offered by the postmodernists or just a, a, a kind of a blankness, a neutralism offered by scientific materialism. Mm -hmm. And we don't have individuals that are trained in how to think about values and to think that thinking about values is okay and that science is imbued with values and that one of the things we have to do is it's time to educate the technium itself to values and to make sure that the technium itself is plugged into the ethical dimension. Yes. And that's something I... I sure you and I would both support, but it's also, so that's a long way from orthodox thinking, isn't it? It is. And, you know, it's, truthfully, it's also not just from the spiritual side or religious side, but, but definitely from the technology side. And, and I think where it becomes really difficult is going back to a statement I said earlier, which is I don't think this, I don't think the technium is neutral. I think it's inherently right. positive. Right. So when we try to overlay uh choice and free will and our own human influence in the world, it becomes really difficult because yeah. there, there is a certain aspect of, of this which suggests that there's a determinism, a, 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 a kind of a technological determinism is a code word which means that basically we don't have any choice. Yeah. Uh, technology is going to do what it's going to do, we don't have any choice. And there is some aspect of that there is some aspect in human biology that, you know, the human body has certain urges, it has certain pathways that it's going to follow in general, and we have to work with that. We don't have to accept all of them, but we have to acknowledge and deal with the fact that teenagers want certain things and will do certain things. Right. So they still have a choice in what kind of teenagers they will be. So this balancing act is sort of sophisticated but it says that there are certain things that the technium wants, certain directions that it wants to go. Right. One of them being it wants to have, wants to connect everything to everything else in the world. It wants to have one kind of big cloak of sensors around the planet. Right. Uh, it wants to have, you know, kind of a worldwide computation. It wants those things, but at the same time, how it does those things is somewhat up to us. There, there are different ways to have a global computer. Right. There is a different. There are different ways to have a global consciousness. Right. And so there are both at work. Both the fact that some of this is inevitable, but how it's inevitable is sort of up to us. Right. And tweaking the technium is going right. to become the the really crucial task. Right. 